Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 on our 2021 Ford Ranger. Now, if you're looking for a quick, easy way to start kind of getting up on these platform racks, starting to get some of our lightweight bikes to the trailhead with you, this can be an excellent option. Now, with only a 40 pound weight capacity, we are gonna get some of those heavier bikes that you might see from other those bigger platforms. However, we are still getting a nice streamlined system to start getting our bikes up on here. You can see we do have a tire hold system, so if you're looking away of getting those carbon frame bikes, this can be an excellent option, especially because those carbon frames tend to be way more on the lightweight side. This can be an excellent option for those, as well as we are going to be able to fit those women's bikes, step-through bikes, and kiddos bikes with no problem because we aren't having to worry about that horizontal frame. That means we're eliminating the need for a bike adapter bar. So this can be especially good if you're starting to take your small family on a trip with you. This can be an excellent option. The platform itself is a nice metallic gray look. As you can see, it is made of aluminum and it does have a powder coat finish, so it is gonna hold up well to the weather as well. And of course, Kuat always with that stylish look. I really like the copper orange in here, as well as the accents on the arms. I think it looks very stylish. Obviously, hopefully you think so as well. You kind of make that decision. On the back end here of our cradles, we see we just have a simple little ratcheting plastic strap system to actually hold in our back tires. It's got a little bit of a little kind of rubber padding on the inside. Just that little bit of matting goes a really long way of making sure that we're not going to be damaging our wheel rims as we hold this down. And as well as this oscillating, um, rotating cradle here, we are going to get a variety of bikes up on here with no problem. I like that inner groove for those standard bikes and the wider grooves for the mountain bikes as well. Keep in mind, with that 40 pound capacity limit, we're probably not gonna be pushing it with those bigger bikes as well. As you can see, just a decent amount of spread here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit those fat tire bikes in here as well. And definitely nothing too crazy on here. Moving our way down the platform, we can see that we do actually have an integrated cable core locking core here actually so our cable lock can go ahead our cable can go through both of our bikes loop in and go ahead and put itself right here i like that it's up front sometimes you start seeing them on the back end they can be really kind of a pain to get to so i do like how it's just right here we can go ahead loop it in and it is going to be locked and it will be key to like to our hitch lock that we're going to break down further in the video moving our way to our ratcheting arm system here you can see it's going to work pretty well for us we're just going to get our wheel set in there bring this arm down like so and as you can see doing a good job of not popping up on there at all so be nice and secure here unless we press in this easy to access button system to actually raise it up again ratchets down very nicely exposing that copper just a little bit gives it a nice clean look and it's extremely easy to collapse down we just walk it in like so. I think I do like about it as well though. When we have it in this system, you can see it's gonna have a pretty good natural resistance, not gonna be popping up on its own unless we want it to, which is great about it. Now, another great thing about this guy, we do have a tilting feature here for us. So maybe hopefully we can go ahead and lower this tailgate, get a little bit more access to the bed of our truck. All we wanna do, come in, and pull that lever down like so, and then supporting our mast, walk it down. Now keep in mind, if you are getting those 40 pound bikes up on there, we wanna make sure we are supporting our mast very nicely for ourselves. And walk it into, we can go ahead and open our tailgate here. I think we might have a little bit of contact here. Yeah, as you can see, right on our pedal there. So unfortunately today, not gonna be able to fully access this tilt away feature on here. However, being up on the bed, we're not gonna have to have too much issue with that. Unfortunately, won't be able to get those big heavy coolers out of here but still gonna be a nice system if we wanna throw this onto a different vehicle in the family, that tilt away is still a nice feature. Definitely don't wanna sleep on it. We can walk that back up. It's gonna go ahead and lock itself in place with no pins and clips to worry about. So I do like how streamlined that system is. Well, let's go ahead, get the bike off, see how easy that is to do for ourselves. As we mentioned in the back here, we just have this plastic stripping. We wanna go ahead and press in on that lever, like so, pulling up that plastic strip getting it set off to the side. And now here's another important thing, guys. We wanna make sure that we are, you know, getting our hand on our bike when we actually go ahead and take off our last point of contact. We don't want this tilting into our vehicle or ourselves, especially as we get heavier and heavier bikes up on here. So again, we can go ahead and put our hand right here. It's got a pretty ergonomic shape too, good for cinching this down with one hand, but also for us to go ahead and easily use that thumb button right there, pressing that up and to the side allows us to get underneath this bike. You can imagine too, this was 40 pounds. We wanna get as close as we can. Getting that arm set off to the side can definitely help. We can just lift it right up. 
and get ready to ride. So extremely easy to do. And even if we were mounting it, you know, we'd do the same thing. We'd just walk right up, get it set, easily set itself in those grooves, walking that strip back. It's nice and simple just to get those loaded up right on the Saturday mornings and get going on the trail. Take a look at the front cradle itself too. You can see we do have those inner grooves as well for the standard tires on there. Getting a little bit wonkier for those mountain bikes and wider and wider as you can see. Still getting a good amount of spread there to actually fit the majority of those tires. And I do like how that actually collapses down and gets out of the way. Well, with any hitch mounted accessory, we are going to be adding some length to our vehicle. So it's important to keep in mind just how much we are adding, especially being up in the Ranger. So let's go ahead and take a look at how much we've actually added on with this platform. Looks like the end of our arm is going to be our longest point. So from the rear of our bumper to the end is going to be right under 35. So 34 and about three quarters there to the end. So 34 and three quarter inches, definitely a little bit of length added to our vehicle. Still, we are getting that nice distance platform rack on here. As you can see, our bikes aren't gonna be banging into each other, causing damage to themselves, which is always great. Adds a little bit of length, but we do have a way of actually shortening that down. Again, that tilt away feature we saw is not just limited to that one action. We can actually go here again, pulling on this lever and walking it straight up. Very, very simple to do. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and latch itself in place. Taking a look, there's little to no play in here. Again, as we mentioned, that arm has a good natural resistance. We won't be worried about this hitting our vehicle at all. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of these dimensions. Now that we've got this in the put away position, our longest point is actually going to be our anti-rattle knob here. And on the back end, that puts us right at 17 and a half inches. 17 and a half inches right to the end there, guys. So already cutting down about more than half of our distance already on the back of our vehicle. That's going to be great for us. If we want to get this in the garage, maybe we need to get in those tight parking places at the trailhead. This can be a great way of getting that maneuverability back in a pinch. So very clean system to utilize. And on the back end here too, we can look and see how close we are to our bumper. Looks like our arm's going to be the closest point and right over six inches by maybe an eighth six and uh, maybe six and one eighth there to the back of our bumper. Gonna have no trouble at all or no danger of this actually touching our vehicle, which is always a nice worry to have alleviated. Another important dimension to keep in mind is our clearance factor. Now we haven't put away now, when we have it in the put away function, our longest point is going to be our anti rattle knob here. So let's go ahead and take a look how close that is to the ground. And at 21 and one quarter inches, I definitely don't think we're going to have too many issues with that clearance factor. Now, keep in mind, as those front wheels go up, the back will go down. So I like how how much that is actually up in the air. Gonna have no trouble at all, hopefully. You can even see too, this has like a slight little rise to it, which is nice because the further we get away from our wheels, the more depth we're actually gonna be dipping down into. So, taking a look at our platform here, let's go ahead and see how far down we are. And at 29 and a half inches, definitely gonna be well up and away off of the ground. I don't think we're gonna have any issue at all with this actually hitting the ground. But if we do have a very steep driveway or we're doing some crazy off-trail, off off-roading, it could be a thing just to keep in the back of our minds. Moving our way down the shank here, you can see we do have a two-inch shank here, which is going to be great for our two-inch hitches. As you can see, we actually have this in here today. Now, another thing I want to point out, we do have a e-trailer hitch pin alignment collar on today. Now, this makes our installation and dismount that much cleaner and simpler for ourselves. Now, once we actually have our hitch pin aligned, all we have to do, throw this collar around and put that pin in like so. And that way, when we take this arm off, every time I walk this up, that pin's going to perfectly align itself, eliminating a lot of the time that we're going to be spending on our hands and our knees, especially crowded behind here. It just makes that installation 10 times nicer for ourselves. Eliminates a lot of that headache before we want to get going in the mornings. And as you can see too, we just have a simple pin and locking cord in the back here. And that's just going to make sure that our hitch stays attached to our vehicle and we leave it unattended. Again, those keys will be key to like to that integrated uh, cable or I'm sorry that locking core on our platform so great little system there if you're like me I always forget my keys so it's nice to have a couple spares and only one will do the trick 
Now, another thing here with this guy too, has a few advantages across a couple of the different platform racks out there. Now, the majority of the time, you're gonna see a lot of threaded anti-rattle hitch bolts, and those do do a good job. They just go in where that pin normally would and usually have the locking core on there. However, they can get cross-threaded. They are kind of a pain to get up into, and a lot of times they require you to have a ratchet with you to make sure they are nice and secure. But on the end here, we just have this simple little torquey knob. This is actually our anti-rattle device. Now on the inside of our hitch receiver, we have a cam, a little ball cam, and now that's actually gonna be pushing up against our receiver and our hitch, bringing it all into line to one system. As you can see, very easy to actually tighten down with one hand. And as I give this whole thing a shake, you can see of just how tight and in line it is. That means we're taking LA, taking away a lot of the play out of our rack, which is gonna make a nice smooth ride for ourselves, our bike racks, and especially our bikes. Anything we can reduce that, you know, that vibration, that travel time is really gonna go a long way. So in the end here too, you can see, we do have a little room for an Allen wrench. What's great about these guys too, is say we're going for a really long ride, not just jump it up to the close park. We wanna make sure that this is extra tight so that it doesn't wiggle itself away on those big highway speeds. You know, actually get and get that Allen wrench in there, give it a nice, you know, one more rotation to make sure we are very, very secure. So I really like that little added feature there. And I like this lever too. As you can see in this put-away station, if I only had one hand on my bike and I'm bringing it up and I'm done from a ride, I can come up right here, take my foot like so, and actually bring this right down to me and start getting myself set to get my bike up on there. I don't have to lean my bike. If you're like us and you don't have a bike stand, it becomes very, very nice to actually just be able to you know, hold that bike, make sure it's not tilting away from ourselves. Well, I think the Sherpa does a really good job of what you're looking for. Yes, you're not getting those higher you know, weight capacities that you might see, especially from like the Envy or some of the other models. However, it does a great job of getting our lightweight bikes to the trail with us. I think it's great for the carbon frames. I think these arms do a really good job of giving us a lot of good contact. And of course, it always looks so good from Kuat. And I really do like that cable, the locking core being right here on the end. I'm not fighting on the inside. And of course, you can't really beat that lever system of how easy it is to use. Well, I think that about does it for our look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 on our 2021 Ford Ranger. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then on to our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or uneven pavement. And last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.